Hey guys, how you doing? I hope you're having a good day and if not, I hope I can make it a little better. So bows have been in fashion everywhere at the moment and I've seen some really cool knitted ones in various like fashion magazines and shops. Here's an example here that I saw in Urban Outfitters and I thought, that's really cute, but I think I can make my own. And I did. <laughs> and I'm gonna show you how you can make your own too. make your own knitted hair accessory. This is a French knitting dolly. These are the kind of things you get given by a grandparent or an elderly neighbour and you have no idea what to do with them. I'm going to show you something you can make with it. For this project you want the ones that is the most simple with just the four screws. Pegs? I meant you call them pegs. Pegs in. If you don't have one you can easily get one at a craft shop or even a toy shop because like I said they're often given out as like toy gifts. You can even make your own. Let me know if that's something you'd like to see sometime. I've never made my own before, but I know how to do it. It'll be something fun to learn together. Next up, you'll want some spare yarn. This started off as a 100 gram ball, and there would definitely be more than enough to make a bow with. You could probably get away with using a 50 gram ball, but I haven't tried that, so I can't promise. I'm using light yarn here, just so it shows up against my dark desk, and you can use whatever color you like. This is double knit yarn. You probably could go thicker or thinner, but I definitely think if you went thicker, you'd start to struggle when using it with the dolly. Next up, you'll need something to secure your bow on when you're done. These are just like hair bands, or what do you call them in America? Hair elastics? These are the size that I use. You could use bigger ones, but I wouldn't use smaller ones. You'll be wanting a darning needle. The difference between a darning needle and a normal sewing needle is that the eye is thicker so that you could fit the yarn through it. Next up is one of these. Now, unless you're a fibre artist, you probably won't have one of these lurking around the house, but there are other things you can use instead. But let me just explain what it is. This is a sock needle. So if you've ever tried knitting a sock, you'll have know exactly what these are. You get like packs of like five, six, seven, eight, nine, just multiple little needles with double ends. And really it's just a uh, small double pointed needle, which is perfect for using on something small like this. If you don't have a small double-ended needle like this, you could absolutely just use a knitting needle. It might just be a bit more clunky to use. And finally, you're going to want a tape measure. Okay, let's get going. Now this setup stage is the hardest part. Once you've done the setup, it is so easy, I promise you. This is such an easy craft. So first thing you wanna do is to get your thread to go through the dolly. If you find that it's all like getting stuck and not going through, that's okay. This is where the darning needle comes in for the first time. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna put your yarn through the hole of the darning needle. There we go. And then, now that you've got a straight, heavier weight on the end of the yarn, you're gonna pop it through the French knitting dolly. And look, it comes out the other end. You can pull it through, remove the needle, cause you don't wanna be like poking yourself whilst you're doing this. And you can get to the next hardest part. Once you've got past this part, it's so easy. I promise, I swear, I swear. I wouldn't lie to you. You're basically gonna be wrapping. Not even I get this wrong sometimes. So this is what we do. We go round. We go round. We go round. We go round. Should we do it again? Just so we can do it. Just so we can see if even I can do it again. <laughs> so we go round, making sure you keep your tension strong here and here. We go round. We go round, and we go round, and this is how it should look. Excellent day! Honestly, that is the hardest bit. Now you've done this bit, it gets so easy. I can like, express to you how easy it gets. So now you want your uh, sock knitting needle, or just your normal needle. Let's see if I can do this so you can see. You want to go under the loop you've made. I do it from the inside of the dolly rather than the outside of the dolly, I just find it's easier. And you want to loop it over, and then you want to pull the bottom here to improve your tension. And you've done your first stitch! Let's do it again. So you go into your stitch. Oops. You 
loop it over, pull the needle out, pull down here so you've got your tension, and you've got your next stitch. And again, thread it through the hole. If you split the yarn like I've done here, just pull it out and go again, because you definitely don't want to split the yarn. And sometimes it will come unraveled, that's okay, as long as you get all the fibres over the peg, that's fine. <laughs> See look, I split it here, but as long as I get all the fibres over, it's okay. There you go, and then you just pull at the bottom, and we keep going. Over. Good job! Are we done yet? Um, I'm afraid not, no. <laughs> We're going to keep doing this now until this plus this measures 60 centimeters, which to give you an idea. for 23 and a half inches. So this is what 60 centimeters of French knitting braid looks like. And it took me about an hour and 10 minutes. So it's perfect to do whilst watching a film, listening to a podcast or an audio book, just something to do when you want to unwind and look how much wool is left. So you can absolutely do this with just leftover bits. And just to remind you, this is all just one kind of wool. It's because it's stripy that it looks stripy here. So, shall we finish it off? First thing you want to do is to cut the thread up here. I'm sure you've got very nice scissors, but I'm just using my craft scissors. <laughs> you want a little bit of extra so you can thread the needle afterwards. So, oops, oh god, that's my <laughs> So, this should be more than enough. So we're going to thread our darning needle on the end. Here we go. So this bit's a little bit tricky, but not too bad. We're going to put the loops off the pegs onto the needle like this. <laughs> See if I can do it at an angle for you. We're just pulling them off the peg onto the needle. There we go. And we're just going to pull it through. <laughs> we're going to go a few more times to fasten it off. One more time just to be super secure because I'm always paranoid <laughs> and this time we're gonna pop a little knot in two and we're gonna pull it through out of the dolly oops not getting it caught on there that won't help will it <laughs> pull it through the dolly okay I'll just pop the needle back on because you're gonna say hey there's this loose bit now that's not very neat it's okay. We're gonna put it, thread the needle, just 
far in as you can into your knitting. So it has a little pop out. Hello! <laughs> so it says hello. And you're going to pull through. And you get your scissors. And you cut. And then if you just pull the knitting. <gasps> but bingo! Yeah! <laughs> And we're going to do the exact same thing with the other end because it's a little bit messy here. This is our chance to tidy up the other end. So we'll put the thread through the needle. We're going to get these loose bits all onto the needle. Hmm. And pull through. Oh, there you go. That's looking tidier already. And pull through again. And one more time for good luck. This time we're going to finish it with a knot as well. And then we're going to put it inside the chain that we've made. As far in as it'll go. So it goes boop. Pull it through. Oops. <laughs> Cut. Let go. And now we've got a perfect cord to make a bow with. So, time to attach it to a hairband. And I've chosen this one. None of them bizarrely exactly match with the colours. But I like this one's got a bit of sparkle in it. Like the yarn I've been using. You can use whatever colour hairband you like. If you want it to contrast, that's perfectly okay. So, we want to find the middle plus a little bit on one side. on it and then we're going to tie our bow with the short side being the bit that you tuck up like this and you just twist it into the bow shape making sure to pull your tail down There we have it. And the great thing about tying it rather than gluing it is that when this band loses its stretch, you can just untie it and tie it onto a new hair elastic. <laughs> what do you think? I'm super happy. It looks really cute and I love how the different ends kind of match each other. <laughs> Here's another one I've made. <laughs> and here's an autumnal one that I've done on a headband. You can also attach them to clips, but I didn't have any spare clips. <laughs> and there we have it. Your own knitted, super cute, super fashionable hair bow. What do you think? Do you think you have a go at making one of your own? I'd love to know. Maybe tag me at Enchanted Violin on Instagram or TikTok or threads if you do have a go, because I would love to see. Well, thank you for making it to the end of the video with me. I'd love to know what your favourite part was. If you could leave a comment in the comment section below. If you could like, subscribe, turn on all notifications and share this video, that would be amazing. You can follow me at Enchanted Violin on Instagram and TikTok and threads. Links will be in the description box below, as well as links to my online comic companions and my Patreon. Oh, also, I'd love to know if you'd like to see any more crafty or fibre arts related work on my channel. Because <laughs> I do do them as hobbies and it'd be fun to share them from time to time. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you next time. Bye!